Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on a Tuesday night, at least here in California, uh, February 27th, 2024. It's about 11.21 p.m. here, California time. And the latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe there shows a 1.4 earthquake in the California. Also a four-pointer down here into the uh, Middle America Trench. Going to start off here with Iceland. Uh, seeing a little bit of earthquake uptick here. Not necessarily in a good spot uh, underneath the uh, region just outside of the town of Grindavik. A little bit of clustering of earthquake activity going on here. So we got to watch that. Definitely some magma stirring up below the surface there. Getting close to the uh, the accumulated magma um, that's been taking place here over the last couple of weeks since the last eruption. We're getting uh, close to that volume of magma reached uh, prior to uh, you know any eruption that we've seen here in the last couple months. So uh, getting close, I think, uh, in terms of eruptive fissure activity. This definitely not a good sign. Uh, again, you know, we did see uh, some eruptive activity take place here just north of town. Uh, not during the last e uh, eruptum, eruption, but uh, the one prior to that. So hopefully, hopefully it will stay out of the town, but still little concern here with that current earthquake activity taking place there. Again, we'll check back on that in the morning, see if anything's changed. As far as earthquake activity out here, a um, little bit of movement going on here in Southern California this morning, got a th or uh, this afternoon, I should say, 3.1 around the Borrego Springs area, that's on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, that did s stir up a little bit of activity up north here. Uh, I know we've had a couple recent earthquakes here since, and it looks like 1.2 and a couple other smaller quakes up along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. No major swarms going on, but uh, just a little bit of increasing there across Southern California. And about the same here across the Southern Branch, or the uh, um, south of the Bay Area. Uh, seen a little bit of movement there, although not quite as active as yesterday. We did see quite a bit of hand, a uh, handful of earthquakes here on the uh, creeping segment, but uh, today a little bit less active. Uh, let's see, Northern California here, a handful of earthquakes, including uh, a 2.2 and a 1.6 here at the southern end of the Cascadia. Let's double check the trimmer map here tonight and see what's going on. Trimmer is sitting at about 57 epicenters here along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Not a big uptick at all. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, looking back over the last week or so, fairly quiet, not a whole lot going on uh, over the last month, a little bit here and there. But if you look at all data here, uh, since it's been uh, studied since 2010 or so, uh, we've seen these regular intervals roughly about here, uh, here, a couple other larger events as well. And, um, they kind of came and, and went on a regular schedule, but it seems like ever since about October of 2022, no, uh, take that back. Yeah, October 2022, this was the last uh, big one right here in terms of trimmer count. It's just been going down. Not a whole lot of elevated trimmer here recently, so I'm not for sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Things could be locked down below in the deeper regions as well. Sometimes we do see some of those deep earthquakes being triggered uh, into the area just under the trimmer region, so uh, which is uh, 35, 45 kilometers deep underneath this area. We'll continue to watch it though and check back on it. Uh, 3.2 in uh, Smith's Ferry, Idaho earlier this morning. Uh, Yellowstone, not a whole lot going on up here. We've got a couple smaller earthquakes. We'll double check that here with the Yellowstone Seismograph Station Overview. Uh, this activity up here, I believe some type of outside interference. The uh, Mammoth Vault area is always picking up some type of noise out there. If this was earthquake activity, it would be showing up uh, quite nicely uh, around the local uh, stations here, but there's not. Uh, what is, is going to be this little spike of an earthquake. That's a well-defined spike. Notice that spike showing up here across various seismograph stations here. That's a, a legit earthquake. But aside from that, man, not a whole lot going on there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, Texas area, handful of earthquakes. A little bit of movement uh, there across Oklahoma. We'll get to the weather reports here in a little bit. Seen a um, pretty nice looking tornado there around Chicago earlier this evening. Seen some damage photos as well. Uh, a little bit of movement here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Aside from that, uh, generally quiet out here, at least on the uh, USGS side of things. Um, 
see if we got anything major going on here. Just some swarming going on across the Middle America Trench, which is expected. Uh, you know, it's a major subduction zone, so that's always almost stirred up. 5.4 down here in the uh, Macquarie Island region. Uh, this one coming in about 10 kilometers deep. Uh, this system out here now, or at least this earthquake, might want to watch the New Zealand region here because things have been uh, fairly active here recently underneath the North Island region with some deeper movement quakes. It does look like things are starting to get more active here across the area. Um, there around the New Zealand region, so we'll continue to watch that and, and uh, you know, just be prepared far as uh, the Java Trench goes, a couple smaller earthquakes out here. And, of course, uh, the typical movement there in the Philippines area, up around the Japan area, cluster going on, including, uh, looks like a 3.5 stirred up there. Fairly recent quake. Uh, the Aleutian Trench at the Kuril Kamachaka up there, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot going on here in terms of larger scale movement. And uh, up in the Alaska area, typical microquake movement out there today. The Hawaii area, getting a little bit of earthquake movement here, stretching off here the uh, eastern side of the Big Island. Uh, let's go see what's going on here. We'll take a look at uh, some tilt meters and whatnot. See if they are functional. It looks like they are. And uh, the volcano is currently not erupting as far as Kilauea goes on the Big Island. Uh, the tilt meter, summit tilt meter, took a little nosedive here this morning. Uh, it doesn't look like there's too much uh, uh, elevated activity there at the summit region in terms of inflation far as any seismograph stations out here and the earthquake activity being recorded. There's really not a whole lot here. If you look at uh, a couple of those graphs here, there's just a very minimal um, earthquake activity showing up on them. I don't know why it continues to do that, but uh, it just does. seems like it wants to be clicked once and then it comes back up. But uh, yeah, either way, uh, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity. Um, and the majority, let's see what, what we got here for those earthquakes they are reporting. Uh, these earthquakes here are uh, the last one, a 2.2, that's down there near Pahala. But these other ones are uh, yeah, gener generally small and somewhat deep as well. A couple deeper earthquakes down here in the region. I'll just continue to watch it. Uh, I think I think something's going to be stirring up here soon. Uh, there's that cluster going on in the South America region, the latest of 4.6 out there. Aside from the Iceland activity there around Grindavik, not a whole lot going on. All right, space weather activity. Well, you know, I wish I could say we're getting a, a decent solar storm in the forecast, but uh, it looks as though, you know, we're, we're flaring a little bit, C2.1, and that is from... Uh, 3590. Look at that magnetic loop right there. That's beautiful. Looks like that's about ready to pop. Uh, 3590 here, the latest magnetogram image does show quite a bit of complexity, but notice it is starting to drift, rotate further off towards the northwestern limb. And uh, goodness, you know, it's hard to say, even if something were to blast off from here, we may get a, a little glancing blow, but uh, it wouldn't be a full on effect say if it were more positioned here center facing the earth but or facing yeah if it was facing the earth here on the sun side the earth facing sun side there we go uh, but we'll continue to watch that uh, as far as any uh, major development here with any of these other flares looking like a or sunspots looking like a couple different regions here maybe showing a little bit of complexity but aside from that nothing absolutely nothing compared to 3590 and the show that it's put on here recently so we'll just we'll continue to watch it 99 percent chance for c flare m flare at 50 x flare around 10 percent chance or so uh and again not a whole lot of auroras there in the forecast uh, far as severe weather it's going to be a noisy dangerous night out there across portions of the midwest and uh around the great lakes as well still looking at uh, the tornado potential lasting through the night wind and hail as well that uh you know definitely a little on the uh, scary side, right? Look at these storm reports here for tonight or for today. We've had six reports of tornadoes there across areas of, uh, well, looks like some of them in Michigan and Illinois. Uh, definitely seen some damage out there. Lots of hail reports coming in. 
um, an inch, inch and uh, three quarters. You know, that's some pr pretty decent uh, hail falling out there. DuPage area, Illinois, two inch hail. Up to hen egg size. That's crazy. So yeah, a lot of hail being reported out there. Tornadoes, seen all that uh, on social media here today. Uh, you know, definitely dangerous, but uh, they're n they're not done with it yet. There's still quite a bit of uh, thunderstorm activity stirring up out there. Let's check out the radar imagery and see what's going on. Um, this will continue through the night. Looks like a little bit of uh, a development down south here as well. The severe portion, you know, it's can't really say it's over. Still got to watch for some severe potential tonight. Uh, but far as uh, far as that cold front, look at that. I think I think you guys can spot it pretty easily there. Look at this temperature difference. Uh, massive cold coming back in here to the Illinois area, uh, following all that severe weather tonight. Not quite into Chicago, but it will be. Look at those cold temperatures roaring roaring in. Winter's definitely uh, coming back here for a little bit. And uh, that'll continue for, you know, a few days or so with that colder air. Uh, although it looks like that uh, kind of wants to drip, drift up north again. Let's check out these uh, numerical models, see what we got for uh, long-term trends out here. Our next decent system here along the west coast continues uh, to show, yeah, some promising rain, but lots of snow up in the mountains as we head into Thursday and Friday. That's going to stick around for a little bit through the weekend and bring with it lots of snow in the in the mountains of course and some colder temperatures behind that looks like maybe another storm system coming in as we head into early next week either way it's going to be unsettled here for a week or so uh this turns into a massive system if this uh rings true we'll have to continue to watch that that's a uh, perfect severe weather setup here as we head into not this weekend but uh next weekend it's a ways out Uh, but anyway, we'll definitely keep an eye on that and uh, report back on potential uh, severe weather activity. All right, as uh, far as seismograph stations go here, looks fairly quiet. There's not a whole lot going on. Again, keep an eye on the uh, New Zealand, or not New, well, New Zealand for one, but this earthquake activity stirring up here underneath the Grindavik region. Definitely uh, of a little concern. This took place here. Oh, man, when were these? A lot of these earthquakes here were um, a few hours ago, but it's just the clustering going on here that's a little concerning. You know, obviously, uh, we will see elevated earthquake activity prior to any eruptive activity opening up out here uh, in the ground there. Uh, they're still thinking the most likely area is north here of Hagefell and around the Slingarfell region. But, uh, you know, got to watch that there. We'll check back in the morning, see how things are holding up. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there, and um, we'll catch you guys in the morning sometime. Take care.